I hope everyone's having a great week so far. I'll just pause while everyone get connected. I see a few people connecting still coming through. I see some new faces, some uh, familiar names, some, some new ones. So welcome if this is your first time joining us. Um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about how our town halls work. So um, we host these every Thursday from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern as a free space for Montessori leaders to come together, collaborate, ask questions, um, and we try to find a, an expert uh, or a leader to come and speak. Today, uh, we have uh, a special guest. Uh, she's here every single week, uh, but today she'll be presenting. It's Camille Campbell. She's the executive director of Nido Marketing, and she's put together a presentation um, and we'll be answering your questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to utilize the chat. I'll be keeping an eye on it. Also, this is being live streamed on Facebook. So if you're joining us on there, I'll also be uh, keeping an eye on the chat. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'll, I'll make sure to read them out loud so that, that, so that they can get answered. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Camille so she can present. Yeah, thank you, Camilla. And um, welcome everybody. I'm um, really happy to be talking about this topic today because I know it is one that um, just recruiting in general is, is a challenge. I know, I think we say that almost every week. And um, so this is one way of kind of trying to address the challenge and rise to meet the challenge. So um, I'm going to be, I'm kind of driving the boat here with Zoom as well as presenting. So if I get a little choppy sometimes, that might be why. So um, just bear with me here. So we're going to be talking about um, today how to build out a really robust careers page for your Montessori website. Okay. And we'll, we'll go over what is a careers page. Um, why would you want to dedicate a page to careers on your website? And also then what to include. And then once you have one, then what do you do with it? So um, hopefully we'll we'll kind of touch upon all the um, pertinent aspects of, of how to go about doing this. There's people still kind of coming into the meeting. So I will um, just uh, carry on here. Okay, so what is a careers page? Um, we have someone in the chat here, let's see. Okay, um, I think Cam our Camilla will probably will get back to you on that one. Yes, we do record these. So um, I would like, um, if you don't mind, if you could drop in the chat what you think a careers page is. Um, and if you have one on your website, I'd just love to kind of get a sense of where everybody's at with this. If you've had time to think about it, if you have one, um, that type of thing. So I'll just wait a, a couple you know, pause a little bit here and see if you can just drop in the chat about that. All right, well, I don't see anybody jumping in about this question, so I'll just go ahead and carry on. But um, here we go. So what is a careers page? Um, what you probably think it is, is a page on your school site that lists your open positions. This is what most people think a careers page is. But what it really is, is it's a landing page to entice visitors to explore more about your school and encourage them to apply for your open positions. You really have to think about what you are offering candidates rather than uh, what you want from them. So it's important to think about it almost in the same way that you are recruiting students on your website, you are also recruiting uh, candidates for your staff. So that's kind of a, just kind of like a different way of thinking about it. And here's also <laughs> a little bit of information here is your entire website is also your careers page. So I can't imagine a candidate going to your website and just looking at the openings and then applying. They're going to check out your entire website. They're gonna look at your history, um, 
your the other staff, what their credentials are, um, your programs. Um, it does it seem like it's a vibrant school? Is it a place? Is it a community that they, that they would want to join? Maybe they even have children of their own, so they're looking for a uh, a place that they can work and also have their own children attend. So it's really important that you're that you consider the careers page in context uh, it, with your entire website. So not to be too overwhelming, but it really is important to have everything um, work in concert and to, to sell your school um, in addition to um, posting your job openings. So. so why dedicate a page to careers? So there's a few reasons here. Um, the, the main one is it functions like a landing page and a landing page is, is just a, um, a term for an entry point into your website. So not everybody is going to land on your website on the homepage. Um, if you look at, this is our demo, this is our quiz. <laughs> this is our live demo site at netosite.com. And, and this is the homepage here. And yes, most people, especially parents who are coming to your website, they're gonna come in through the homepage. But this is um, our demo careers page. And as a landing page, this is the URL that you would want to advertise when you're looking for people to join your school. And this is the link that they're going to go to. So this page needs to function very well on its own. And also by following you know, good SEO best practices, um, that page in, by itself will rank higher if someone's searching for Montessori jobs or Montessori jobs near me or however um, the kind of search terms that you put in to your uh, metadata on that page. So the other thing is what I just mentioned is give it a really simple URL so that you can then promote that page on social media and help you find a broader audience for your, um, for your job postings. Any questions about that? I'll just pause for a second here. No. So like any good landing page, um, it should engage the candidates. It should grab the attention of the visitor and provide all the essential information they are seeking. Um, it should invite them to learn more about your school and get excited about joining your team and working with you. So you can see you really want to put a lot of information on this page. Th these, this is the, you know, the reason for the page are the current openings, but you want really want to have the page um, be engaging so that they want to kind of dive deeper and actually submit a resume to you if they're a good fit. Um, it's important that it has ways to connect with you. So you really want it to have easy call to actions that allow them, if they're excited and they want to apply to your school, that they can do it very easily right through the website. And I'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. But, um, you know, things like a apply now button and have some automation behind that so that they can seamlessly submit their resume and, um, you know, just contact you right away without having to go through any other you know, exit out and, and go through email and, you know, just make it really easy and simple for them. The other reason to dedicate a page on your website or pages um, is you own the platform. In other words, the website, your website is the only place that you have complete control over what goes on it. And you're controlling that visitor's experience. So yes, it's important to post on job listing sites and social media, um, but you also have run the risk there of there's a lot of other activity happening on those websites. But once they come to your website, you really can run the show there. Um, you have complete freedom. You can, you can really tell your story and you have a lot of space to do that if you want. And my guess is, um, you know, you probably, pay for your website, um, somebody <laughs> to host and maybe, you know, run your website, but um, adding a careers page probably doesn't add to the expense. Um, it should just be part of 
of your overall expense that you're paying anyway. So in other words, it's free. So you have complete control, it's free. Um, and you know you can really uh, design a nice page that's going to pull in good candidates. Okay, so now we're gonna get into, is it, does anybody have any questions about that so far? No, okay. Um, so what do you wanna put on your web, on your careers page? These are um, just some good best practices for what to really include on that page. So the first thing that I would recommend is your benefits and perks. So a lot of people would think, well, you should really put your job postings as first, but you really want to lead with your benefits. That's like a marketing mantra, <laughs> but you really want to lead with this because this is what's going to um, make somebody really want to apply and um, submit their resume and want to work with you. Um, these are difficult times. It's hard to find good people. And so these are just some ideas here. You know, you might not have all of these benefits, um, but get creative thinking about um, other ways you can provide benefits that maybe don't cost money as much. So maybe, um, maybe flexible work schedules, um, things like that. That type of thing um, might really resonate with somebody who, you know, maybe they're a, a trained guide, but they only can work four days a week. Maybe you can somehow take advantage of that and, and, and work with that. So um, put those kind of perks and, and benefits, per, put them first on your page. So I'm gonna go back here to this demo page and you know, kind of lead with your mission and why, this isn't really the mission here, but you know, why they really, why you value great teachers and employees. And then here, these are the benefits right here. You know, you're going to be joining this great group. Um, you know, we have fun, but we we take our mission seriously. And whatever whatever message that you want to convey, um, and then really nuts and bolts, put it out there. What do you offer? Um, whatever you have that you can uh, use to make your um, working at your school more attractive, um, lead with that, because that's going to catch people's attention. Okay. And then the open position. So this is obviously the meat of it. Um, but think about when you're posting your job openings, um, Think of them as job advertisements, not job descriptions. I think I, I see a lot of job postings where it's really just, this is what you need. These are the qualifications we need. This is what's expected of you. You know, um, Maybe just kind of flip the perspective a little bit. And I think I'm gonna be kind of beating this um, to death here, but you, know, you want to put it in um, a framework of this is uh, what, we can do for you. This is the kind of work experience that we can provide for you. Um, obviously here, make your make make the open positions easy for candidates to find. Um, again, write the descriptions from the perspective of what you have to offer them. And um, if you have several openings, make it easy for them to browse those openings. On this page, I just put three, but um, you know, make it easy and and kind of think about the copy that you want to have on the page to, to sort of um, grab their attention. Do you want to join a community that is transforming lives? You know, that's pretty powerful. So let's, you know, just give that a little bit of thought. And then when they click on learn more, and I, I, this page isn't really fleshed out, but, you know, then you can talk about the details. This is what you'd be doing. Again, these are our benefits. And here, we'd love to talk to you if you, and then have your qualifications and requirements listed there. You know, if you have, you know, whatever college degree, um, you know, certain training, any of that. If you're gonna offer, you know, sponsorship for training, anything that, that would be something to really highlight and um, get into some more of the details about that because that can be um, a great benefit. 
And then repeat your mission here. It doesn't have to be long, a couple sentences, just again, to kind of, um, you know, reiterate the why, why you would want to come work here and, and join this great community. Just like on our, our websites where we have testimonials from parents, it really makes sense to have testimonials from your current employees. Who better to communicate how great it is to work at your school than people who work at your school? So um, ask your current employees to write a, a short testimonial for you about um, how great it is to work at your school. Uh, this is something that you can put, I'm gonna go back to the other page here you know, put right, right on that careers page. Um, these are very short, but you know, the idea here is you just really wanna have some uh, social proof. Along those same lines, Glassdoor is a great website. Um, that'll show up in searches. Uh, encourage your staff to write, write those testimonials on Glassdoor because um, people searching for jobs will find them there. Clear calls to action. So I alluded to this before. Um, you really do want to make the application process as simple and straightforward as possible. So um, include those buttons and the automation. Now, we have a CRM that can be configured to um, aid in this automation. And I can show you what that looks like. But really what it is, and there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but to have a form on your website that it's easy to upload a resume and then you can kind of streamline that process. So here, I can just show you what that looks like. So if someone clicks on apply now, they hear this form, I don't know if, how clearly you can see it, but first name, last name, email, phone, and then upload your resume. So it's as easy as I have a, I'm a dummy one here. Oh, actually, I think I'm supposed to click on it here. So there it's uploaded. I'm gonna put Camilla's name in here. Lucky you. And I'm gonna just show you how this would work. Okay, so submit. That's how easy it would be for someone to submit. And if they had multiple files, they could upload multiple files. It redirects them to this thank you page. Now, if you're running ads, we would check to make sure that um, any conversions that were happening, we would, we would base it on this page showing up. And then here again, you would redirect them to maybe read more about your school. Now, this is our CRM here. And I'll just show you what that would look like on the other, sort of on your side of it, if someone submitted that form. I'm just refreshing the screen here a minute. So here you see, this is this is the contact here that I just created. Um, and you can see that she has the tag of job applicant. And so if I click on her, I can see the information that she input. Now you can have a form have any, any fields that you want really. Um, it automatically sent here a thank you, you know, basically a confirmation. It said, hey, thank you for submitting your resume. Um, I'll get back to you very soon. And then right here, here's the resume. So you can go in and look at it um, and, and basically keep track of everything right here. Over here, you can see what pages they visited on your website. If you wanted to make notes about um, about this, you know, candidate, you know, you can just do that easily right here in the CRM. So we're big proponents of using the <laughs> CRM here. Um, you can also use it for um, uh, interview scheduling if you want. Um, that would also be a great application for it. The other tool or the other um, aspect of the CRM that is really handy is the um, pipelines here. So this is the admissions pipeline. So this would be for students, but you can have a pipeline for job applicants. And this is where you could keep track of where people are. Now, 
wouldn't it be lovely if this was just full of a bunch of job applicants? And I, I realize that most of us don't have, you know, 47 applicants um, to keep track of, but still it's a nice way um, of just moving somebody through that process of, and tracking, you know, where they are. Obviously you can have these be whatever stages you envision your um, application process to have. This is an application process for, for job applicants, not for students. So it's a separate one. Maybe you had a conversation with someone who you thought might be interested in joining your school. You could just manually add them and put them under leads and that would just remind you to follow up with them later. Any questions about the CRM? Oh, okay. All right. So another important piece of information to have on that careers page is uh, information about where you are, where you're, what makes your community special. Um, why, especially if you're offering relocation benefits, or or even if you're not, but a lot of times um, a, um, hiring somebody might involve them moving to be closer to your school. So it's just, you know, a great idea to have um, a little bit about what makes your community special, you know, um, include some photos, um, include some other, you know, links off to other sites that might have, um, you know, information about what it's like to live in, in your area. I, I think, I think this is really important um, and just, you know, think about what you love about living in your community and just kind of relay that on your website. I think that's um, really helpful for, it just shows a, you know, an awareness of what uh, somebody who's thinking about coming to work at your school would be interested in. And now the rest of these things are, I would kind of have as nice to have, and you know, you don't obviously have to have these things, but um, these would be great. They're just more ideas. Um, if you have a virtual tour, um, maybe uh, these are videos um, to have on your that page or even another page. Um, maybe you have one that is from you um, as head of school or hiring manager, introducing yourself, encouraging them to, uh, you know, apply. Um, do you, maybe you have some of your other staff members sort of give a video testimonial. That would be really great. Uh, introducing the process. Uh, and, um, you know, just again, like your regular virtual tour of your school, maybe um, a few of your classrooms, just so they can get a sense of what, you know, what makes up your school and what is like the day to day experience. I think these could be really great. Um, they also really help with SEO. Um, and if you ever run ads, these are great um, short videos to have um, as recruiting ads for your for your school. Now you may have your mission, vision, and values elsewhere on your website. I think it's really great to kind of repeat it right on that careers page so they it, they don't have to look around for it. Um, it, it kind of brings everything back to why, again, why would somebody want to come work with you? Um, this is just a little information about what your values and vision um, are and your mission statement is kind of, again, your, your purpose and, and the kind of the goals that you're working for um, toward each day. So these are a great thing also to have on your careers page. If you don't have the ability or the um, time or whatever to put together some video, take some photos and just add some copy to that um, to give candidates a sense of what it's like to work at your school. Um, you can explain the daily routine, um, maybe, you know, give an overview of your annual events that will give um, candidates a good sense of what um, sort of the ebb and flow of your school year. 
And then photos are fantastic. So what are the, what do the classrooms look like? What's what are the common space? What's the outdoor environment look like? These are all really great things to have um, to have on your careers page. Does anybody have any questions before we move on? I just want to pause for a second here. Okay. All right. Um, so you have a great careers page. Now what? So you, you put some work into it. What do you do? So what you want to do is what I had showed you previously is set up your CRM to track those candidates. Um, this would really allow you to kind of stay on top of um, anybody that comes in. It allow it makes sure that you respond to everybody. Um, you really want to make sure that you do that. You can automate your interview scheduling. You can you can have you know your calendar. You can send out a link and say, "I'd love to interview you. Please you know select a time." So this is a great thing to do. Um, to just kind of smooth out the process. Advertise online. So here are some sites, uh, again, that you can post your job um, openings on. And now that you have a landing page, you have a place to drive them to. So teachmontessori.org is, I believe, free. I, I think they might, I think it's got a um, sort of a public Montessori focus on it, but, um, and they do ask for maybe a donation but it's fairly, it's reasonable. And then obviously Indeed and LinkedIn, um, Montessori Jobs. If there is a state Montessori Association, um, I know I'm in New Hampshire, but um, actually <laughs> the school I was at was part of the Massachusetts Montessori Administrators Group. So, you know, if any kind of state Montessori Association will probably have a jobs board and that will allow you to find people perhaps who are more local. Um, Obviously, Google ads and Facebook ads. Um, we we have run some Facebook ads. It's pretty tricky um, because of new rules for Facebook, but it's still um, I still would at least recommend posting on Facebook. Maybe not running ads, but posting them. So about your openings, um, we have a whole list of all, all um, different resources like this on Thrive um, that you can download here. That just has a bunch of different avenues for getting the word out about about your jobs. Social media, obviously. Um, so there's some Facebook groups that you could join. Um, again, I think these are also listed in that document. Um, and then Montessori Jobs USA, Montessori Teacher Jobs. I know these are quite busy and a lot of job postings there, but it's still um, it's still a great uh, idea to get your your job posting there. And again, now that you have this great landing page, you might have a leg up on some of these other schools that maybe are just posting a a little more um, you know conventional type of uh, job listing, and this might be a little more enticing. Um, Instagram. Of course, TikTok, I know that Matt Hillis, our co-founder, has um, created TikTok videos and, and said he's had great luck with recruiting, especially for like assistants. Um, so that's something to explore. And um, Camilla put a link, dropped a link to the, the Montessori recruitment guide there in the chat. So thanks, that's great. Connect with local colleges. So um, especially if you have a program to send good candidates to training, um, reach out and form relationships with local high schools and colleges. Um, quite often they will, uh, students will need to have um, an internship or something. So this might be a resource. And um, if you have that careers page now, you can set, send an email to, to those you know, institutions and give them the link to your careers page. So they can then maybe forward that to their student body. Um, if they have career fairs, find out about that. 
um, you can create a QR code. Uh, does everyone know what that is? It's the, like the square, funny looking um, code that um, allows you to embed a URL easily. And you can just use a phone to take a picture of it and it'll bring you right to the web page. So create a QR code for your careers page and put that on a postcard um, and hand those out. And um, if you offer sponsorship, I have I've mentioned this before, um, be sure to highlight that on your page because um, I know that most students that are at and in Montessori training now are being sponsored. So, um, you know, and it doesn't have to be a full sponsorship either. Um, so it's something to consider if you're really struggling to find trained teachers. There's this, I'm not gonna go into, we have had, I think a couple of town halls really just about recruiting and everything. And so I won't go too deep into that, um, but really, um, you know, the idea here is to just really put it all out there on your page and, and, um, and make it compelling. So once someone has, you know, engage with you through your website or otherwise, um, just make sure you have a really well-defined um, interview process um, and, and let your candidate know what to expect. Um, this just shows a level of professionalism that, um, that they'll, they'll respect. So, you know, where will you meet them? Who, what questions, you know, what you wouldn't tell them obviously in advance what questions you will ask, but have it in mind. Um, how long will the interview take? What are the next steps? You know, just these are just again. I think we have a whole. Um, I think we have a blog article, don't we, Camilla? On the, yeah, we do, on the interview process. So um, we'll link to that too um, with this. But just it just shows a level of professionalism that will will really help. You know, this is kind of getting beyond the the careers page and and to, you know, kind of sealing the deal here. Um, once you've interviewed or even before, keep them updated, keep those candidates updated. Um, make sure you respond to everyone and keep them updated. You can, you know, sometimes um, you're waiting to have a couple of, you know, you maybe have three or four interviews scheduled and the first one interviews and, and you want to be able to uh, make sure that you keep even after you've interviewed someone, it's the same as admissions, right? If, if you want to, if, um, there are possibility, you wanna make sure that you don't lose them in the interim. So just keep them keep them apprised of, of where things are. Um, the CRM can help with that. You can just set up um, reminders for yourself to send an email. You can kind of have um, templated emails out that, that just kind of keeps, keeps the communication open. Okay, and then if you've hired somebody, really have a well-defined onboarding process. Um, this just really helps when they've got a great start to their employment with you. Uh, it goes a long way to, to keeping them. I mean, you've worked so hard to find this um, new staff member, you wanna hang on to them. So again, I think we also have another blog article just about this. So just make sure that it's a smooth onboarding process. Um, you know, make them feel very welcome. Uh, maybe have them partner up with an existing staff member, or just make sure they know who they can go to for questions. Um, have a staff handbook, and I think everybody probably does. But um, you know, it's just really important to have everything in writing so expectations are clear, and um, you know, communication is never, never, um, never breaks down. And um, and check in with them, you know, obviously this is kind of common sense stuff, but, um, you know, check in with them after their first day and then after their first week. And then, and I mean like a one-on-one -on -one really, you know, how are you doing? How did this, you know, uh, do you have questions? You know, what can I do to help um, any challenges? That type of thing. So this is just really important for retention. All right. So that's what I have um, just to kind of sum everything up. Um, a careers page is really helpful if you want to have attract good candidates. Um, it really only functions well in the context of a great website. Um, 
create compelling job advertisements. And that's what I mean by your job postings, not job descriptions, but job advertisements. And clearly you need to put the details of the job in that job description, but think of it as an advertisement. Um, lead with your benefits. Uh, create that streamlined application process. You wanna remove any friction of, of between interest and applying and then publish links to your page everywhere, everywhere you can think of. Um, that's really the gist of it here. So um, here are some resources that we have available. Um, our demo website, anybody can come look at this and kind of see what a good practice would be for a career page. It's not super long, it could be longer, um could add video to it but you know feel free to interact with it you know go ahead and apply for a job <laughs> and, and you'll see what happens you'll see the um like this is the email here that um for example would be going back to the applicant um anyway so go ahead and play around with that um we have a couple of town halls that it's really great, I think, to go back and watch again. Um, the one with Letty Rising was great. I watched that again myself this week just to in preparation for today. Just a lot of great ideas, um, kind of out of the box thinking for recruiting. Um, and then Bonnie's as well was great. Um, we have a YouTube video. I think anybody can watch that, right? Camilla? Yeah, it's it's public. So um, these links will be on the on the obviously you can just link to this from my slide deck here and then um we have some resources on thrive the recruitment guides and job descriptions and also um our forum you know just collaborate with other leaders what's working and um that leads me into my last slide so just i'd like to just have a discussion of what has worked well for your school i'll stop sharing and maybe we can discuss a little bit. Anybody? Was that helpful? Was it? Yeah. Yeah, it's really helpful, Camille. I don't know. We not, nothing is working currently. <laughs> but we'll um, yeah, take some of your ideas and see what we can do. Do you have a section on your website for career? It's just a job listing um, with links to the job description. Well, either job ad or job description. So, but they need to be improved. Yeah, and I know it just takes time, which nobody has. Um, <laughs> but to think about it, I think in the same light as recruiting students, I think can be helpful where you really want to, you know, put yourself in the shoes of a candidate that's got all the choices in the world, right? Because it's their market and, um, you know, what would make them want to work for you and, and just try to really make a page or a, you know, section of your website anyway, that's compelling. Yeah, we have um, two new-ish, one is very new to us and then another new-ish to us uh, elementary teacher. And we're looking for another elementary guide. And yesterday I was like, oh, you guys are meeting today. Like, what can I tell other people <laughs> about what you love, why you love being here? Um, so I'm hoping get to them today and get some answers on that. Cause I wanna know what appeals, right? Like, I know why I like being here, but I work in the office. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And maybe get them to write just a couple sentences, like testimonial, yeah. you know. Um, as long as they're thinking about that anyway, that you can then put on that careers page. Cause I think yeah. that's really, I don't think a lot of schools do that. And I think that might set you apart. And I, they, you, it's something that you don't think makes much difference, but think about whenever, I know whenever I'm purchasing something or whatever, I read reviews mm -hmm. and it's same idea. Um, you know, it, it just kind of gives you a little bit of a leg up on, on maybe some of the other, um, the competition. So something we talked about, and I think one of our other, one of our many staffing uh, conversations at this point 
uh, was getting current staff to leave reviews on websites like Glassdoor because a lot of people do check on Glassdoor like what it's like working there. Um, and yeah, they could go in and leave a review. Um, a lot of people will, will be checking their, their possible future employers. So it, it, it is an option to, to get a, a good testimonial review on, on those websites. I think you can post job openings on Glassdoor as well. Um, yep. I don't know. My guess is it's not free, but I don't, don't know. It's, it is paid. Yeah, but you can, you can post job opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's another LinkedIn and, and Glassdoor are probably two good places to post job openings. What I recommend for LinkedIn is it will cost you to advertise on their job search. But if you have an account for your school on LinkedIn, you can post for free, just like as you would post on Facebook. So you can post about openings and announce that, you know, we're hiring, you can put that on your banner. Um, and that's free for you to do. But yes, if you're going to be advertising on um, on the actual job search, it will cost you, I think, a certain amount per day. Yeah. Neil, um, we don't have any career page on our website at the moment. Uh, we really haven't thought about it a whole lot. But what would be really nice for the schools is to... Uh, have a, have a sense in terms of where do these candidates go? What resources they use looking for a job? Do they go to, for example, let's say uh, AMI website? Do they go to, uh, I mean, mostly, most of them are basically sponsored this or that, or many, many of them go to like, like uh, your kind of uh, page that you're talking about to look for jobs. That way we at least would know where to put our efforts in, right? I mean, it's, uh, that would be very helpful. And is this, this is a service that I think AMI USA could provide as, as a, a survey to the community of teachers. So, I mean, how did you, I mean, where did you go to look for jobs? And that data we don't have, unfortunately. So we do not know, okay, for example, maybe maybe this is uh, this page that you talk about in a website, that may be just a fantastic thing because maybe we don't, we don't know, but maybe half this people looking for jobs always visit these websites. If that is the case, then that would make even a more compelling uh, reason to, to develop on this or something else. So that would, unfortunately, that without the data is kind of, we're just kind of fishing in the dark. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. And I, I think that, um... You know, obviously, anybody who does come to you, um, you should ask them, how did you find out about us? <laughs> um, but I still think, so I, I, I agree with you completely. I think that that would be great um, data to have and see. And I don't know if there's a clear answer because I think people are coming from all different, you know, some might, might be looking on AMI, although some might, you know, be looking on Montessori jobs, you know, who, who knows? Um, it's hard, it's hard to know. But what I do know is if somebody's interested, if even if you, no matter where you advertise and have your posting elsewhere, I bet you nine times out of 10, they're gonna go to your website and check you out first. Because um, I mean, I would, I, I don't know anybody who wouldn't, right? Because you want to get a sense of who, who they are. You're not just gonna submit a resume. So that's kind of where this, picks up where you want to make it like a, a really nice place for them to go to, to really showcase your school. And once they get there, then you kind of reel them in. So um, regardless of where they're looking, you know, like I said, you have the control on your website. That's the one place where you have complete control and freedom to wax poetic about all the great things in your school. So um that makes sense. Yeah. We can check and see if there's any data around where people generally search. But I think people come, you know, I, I my sense is probably AMI trained people are going to the AMI website and AMS are probably on the AMS website. And, and then people who are maybe looking to be sponsored might be looking elsewhere and not even know about AMI or AMS. So I'm not sure if there's a clear answer there. 
Um, that's just kind of my gut, but I don't have any data to back that up. And one area that is good in this sense is, uh, are the training centers posting your jobs in the training centers? Uh, and the trainees who are looking over there, they will look at it. So that's probably a good way to at least start out, I think. Um, but regardless, I think your point is well taken that they will definitely visit the website. And if you can have something above and beyond what other websites might have, that definitely will help. Yeah, yeah. And my understanding is, I know that, you know, back when I was at my school, which is now... <laughs> over, I guess, maybe seven years ago now, it's been a while, but we used to, you know, if someone was going to the AMI conference or whatever, we would, and we had an opening, we would make a little poster and we would post, you know, we would send it to um, two training centers and things like that. But my understanding is now most students who are at the training centers are already spoken for. They're already, they're there because they're sponsored by a school. So there, there's not a lot of teachers now that say, hey, you know, I'm going to go get trained and go get themselves to a training center and, and pay for their own training and then decide then where they want to work. I think a lot of them are already spoken for. So um, that is true. Yeah. I guess the other the other thing that I, I think is helpful is to try to kind of have your own pipeline in-house of if you have assistants that are interested in becoming teachers, you know, have some in the wings because some of you, you never know when you're going to, when a lead guide might decide to move on. And, um, you know, it's hard, to, so hard to find teachers now to kind of have, have your own pipeline <laughs> in your school so that you can fill those positions a little easier. Something that, um, and I'm going to drop the link in the chat for specifically for Letty Rising's um, town hall recording on recruiting because her perspectives were really great. And she talks about a little bit um, how, yeah, at, just like what Camille said, so many people at the training centers are already spoken for that really the staffing process for Montessori schools is more of an active recruitment process. It's not as simple as just posting on job sites and waiting for people to apply it's almost like having to actively go out and search and see if people would be willing to, to go through the training process, even with you sponsoring it. So it's kind of a more hands-on um, process nowadays, which is difficult for a lot of schools. I know that so many of you already have so much on your plate, but um, when you start early, like recruiting in colleges or just um, kind of searching for people who are willing to go through the training, that might be a solution if you're really just struggling finding anyone trained um, to apply. Maybe you you feel like you're throwing away money posting on LinkedIn or Indeed, you're spending a lot of money on advertisements that aren't bringing the right people. That could be a sign that it's, it's probably gonna be more effective to recruit even though that's a longer process. Um, but yeah, it's certainly a challenge right now for, for schools everywhere. Yeah. I just read somewhere that there was a posting, I think in Michigan somewhere, they were looking for teachers, saying that teachers wanted no education or experience required. <laughs> That's how desperate some people are. <laughs> and it's happening in public schools as well. I've been reading a lot of articles that um, public schools are dealing with staff shortages. Um, it, it's, it seems to be just an issue around um, education in general. So at least, you know, we're all in it together and hopefully we can find some advice. Um, what seems to have worked for some schools, at least the school that I, I used to be at was um, offering benefits that weren't necessarily financial, like uh, a slightly more flexible working, things like that. Um, that just seems to be what uh, newer staff, especially assistants valued. Um, so maybe, ex you know, experimenting a little bit with um, benefits that may not be financial necessarily, but could help you um, find more people and broaden the pool there. Yeah, I agree. And I, and I just come back to as well, um, you know, just 
finding like like Camilla said, you know, maybe connecting even even high school grads. I mean, not everybody wants to go to college and um, might be, you know, interested in an assistant position. And don't don't write those off because um, that could be somebody who you could sponsor to. I, I realize like AMI I know requires a bachelor's degree, but you know, in any case, um, just you have to, I think, I know we've been saying this, but just kind of be creative and, and really do some outreach because they're not, they're obviously not coming to us. So, and maybe we can benefit a little bit from the overall teacher shortage and maybe have an angle of, you know, are you frustrated by the constraints of the conventional education system or something like that, you know, kind of lead with maybe Montessori is for you um, and then, you know, describing what it is um, and, you know, offering more flexibility and less paperwork and everything that, that a public school um, teacher would have to deal with. So um, play, that's what I mean by lead with your benefits. They're not all financial benefits. They're like their flexibility and, you know, just the teaching pedagogy, you know, is a benefit. Um, that I think that um, we could really play up. So, all right, any other ideas? I hope this was helpful. Um, if anybody's a client of ours and they want to uh, put together a careers page, we'd be happy to help you with that. It's not something that we've had to focus. Well, we haven't really focused on it um, until recently. So, um, but everything that we do to attract parents to your school, um, you know, marketing is marketing and we can apply that to attracting candidates. It's tougher though. It is tougher. <laughs> um, so. I'm assuming Camille that uh, you guys have uh, a career page on your new marketing website. Or solutions we, aid? Uh, there is a careers page on needlemarketing.com. Yeah, but it's pretty minimal. <laughs> we never have any trouble finding people. Which is, oh, okay. So, yeah, but um, there is one. We don't have any openings right now. So it's kind of bare bones at the, at the moment. And it's just linked in the footer. Um, but we also we hire seen. worldwide and everybody is remote. So that makes it a lot yeah. easier. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have any sense in terms of how much um, your career page has helped with respect to recruiting. I mean, uh, you don't have any sense of that, do you? Of how much it's helped for recruiting? Yeah. In your case, in for needle marketing. Um, I really don't because we typically... We typically post um, job openings on different sites and then the resumes come in. I so, see. But when you're posting for a, um, it's, it's just not as, um, again, we're worldwide. So we have a big pool yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we're remote and the types of jobs that we offer, that we have are um, just different. So, um, yeah. like a client manager or a graphic designer or, you know, um, a writer, things like that. It's just a little easier than a Montessori trained teacher that needs to really be local, you know. Do you collect data in terms of uh, when people apply for your jobs to see you know, where they're coming from and all that stuff? Do you collect any data in CRM for yourself or you, you haven't had, had the need um, to do that? No, no, we don't. I actually, I preaching the CRM, but we don't. I don't use that for um, for our own recruiting because okay. we haven't had to. If I, if we had to, I would. But um, we would find a. Um, we basically would post a job on like an Indeed or something, and just kind of. There's always a lot of resumes that come in. It actually the problem we have, and I shouldn't even say this, but the problem that we have is too many, you know, and it's too many to weed through because, um, again, because we're pulling from such a big pool of, um, and our, you know, it's, 
being a Montessori teacher is much more, you know, you have to be much more trained than to <laughs> work at, you know, marketing, um, at least some of the jobs here. So, although I think we have a fantastic team here, um, we really do. So, all right. Um, all right, well, if there aren't any other questions, I guess we're a little early, but not too early here. Just before we finish, Camille, I wanna say one, uh, one last thing for all of you who are Montessori Thrive members or part of our community, our parenting series is going to be back in October. So I just dropped the link to our page there as well. And if you're a, um, a Montessori Thrive member, you can access the virtual flyer so your parents can get registered. It's free for parents to join the call. We've got our, our um, speakers, we've got great topics. So your families can join our parent education sessions throughout the month of October. Um, so we look forward to seeing your families there. If you have any questions about the town halls or the parenting series, you can email me. I'll drop my email um, in the chat below. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions about that. Also, we're currently looking um, for a speaker to come and talk about um, school financing, tuitions, and scholarships. So if anybody knows an expert or somebody who, who is willing to come and talk about that, um, please let me know. You can just send me an email with a, a name of somebody who, a consultant maybe that you've worked with that's helped you set up a, a tuition scale that's worked or a scholarship fund, things like that. We'd love to host a town hall on that in the future. Um, and then next week, we have a great speaker. We have Peter C. Pache, who's going to be joining us. He's going to be talking about basically how to help yourself as a school leader and how to kind of find um, strategies to make you feel, you know, less burnt out. Um, we know that you you carry a lot on your shoulders uh, running a school. So um, he's great. He's worked with several school leaders. So we look forward to um, his meeting next week as well. Yeah, yeah, he's great. I'm looking forward to that one myself. So that'd be great. All right. Thank you, Camilla. And thank you, everybody. It's great to see you. I hope it's a beautiful day here in the Northeast. I don't know where you are, but it is gorgeous here today. So <laughs> um, hope you can get out and enjoy the day. So thank you. Bye-bye.